Learning objectives. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to explain the IoT architecture and frameworks, describe the IoT interoperability and its design considerations, and discuss industry aligned use cases. IoT device architecture. There are four layers in the device architecture. The base layer consists of IoT devices. This includes all the components, like sensors, with the ability to sense, compute, and connect to other devices. Let's move on to the second layer which is the IoT gateway or aggregation layer. This layer significantly aggregates data from various sensors. These two layers form the definition engine and they set the rules for data aggregation. The next layer is based on cloud. It's called processing engine or event processing layer. It has numerous algorithms and data processing elements that are ultimately displayed on a dashboard. This layer basically processes the data obtained from the sensor layer. The last layer is called the application layer or API management layer. It acts as an interface between third-party application and infrastructure. The entire landscape is supported by device managers and identity and access managers, which are useful for security of the architecture. IoT Reference Architecture Next, let's learn about the various layers in the IoT Reference Architecture. Device Layer The device layer is the main component where there are various devices like sensors that are interconnected. Some examples are Bluetooth connected via mobile phone and Zigbee via Zigbee Gateway. The other devices include the Raspberry Pi that is connected to the Ethernet via Wi-Fi. This is directly connected to the communication layers, which are part of the second layer. Communication layer. The communication layer, or gateway layer, has REST protocols and other application-level protocols. Both the layers are tightly coupled and generate enormous amount of data. Now, the bus layer, or aggregation layer, acts as a message broker. It forms a bridge between the data and the communication layer for the sensors. This is an important layer for three reasons. It supports an HTTP server and or a MQTT broker. It aggregates and combines communications via gateway, and it bridges and transforms data between different protocols. The next layer is the event processing and analytics layer, which drives data and provides transformation to the data generated. It provides the ability to do event processing, the data is stored in the database. The client layer is used to create a web-based engine to interact with external APIs. This can be fed into the API management systems. This layer helps create a dashboard and provides a view of the analytics and event processing. This layer helps communicate with systems outside the network using machine-to-machine -machine communication. So we've seen the comprehensive IoT reference architecture with various components, rule engines, interfaces, and security systems embedded. Cross-functional architecture is possible using Device Manager that provides a single platform for remote management. The Device Manager communicates with devices through set protocols. Device Management uses Device Management agents and is responsible for the remote management of software. The Identity layer has the capabilities of cybersecurity, including policy control and OAuth 2 token insurance. Other capabilities include identity services, XACML, PDP, and Directory of Users, e.g. LDAP. IoT Reference Frameworks There are a lot of frameworks for IoT setup, but the most common is the ISO 30141, and it provides commonly used vocabulary, reusable designs, and best practices for any developer to design an application. It also has many secure application standards that derive the maximum benefit for the organization and reduce the risks. IoT Standardization and Design Considerations There are a number of IoT standards, and these are evolving over time. Some of the key ones are M2M, that is a machine-to-machine -machine service layer that can be embedded in hardware and software to connect devices. Contiki, which is an open-source operating system for low-cost, low-power IoT microcontrollers. Light OS, a Unix-like operating system for wireless sensor networks. Random Phase Multiple Access. This is a proprietary standard for connecting IoT objects. The last one is SIGFOX, a proprietary low-power, low-throughput technology for IoT and M2M communications. IoT Interoperability Challenges. IoT maturity comes with several challenges, specifically pertaining to interoperability and interfacing. The reasons are coexistence of multifarious systems, 
devices, sensors, equipment, etc. that interchange location-time-dependent information in varied data formats, languages, data models, constructs, data quality, and complex interrelationships. Multi-vision system designed by manufacturers over time for varied application domains, making formulation of global agreements and commonly accepted specifications very difficult. New things that get introduced and that support a new unanticipated structures and protocols. Existence of low-power devices, which need to exchange data over lossy networks, and may have minimal likelihood or accessibility for a power recharge in months or years. IoT design considerations. When you choose an IoT solution, you need to consider several factors, like its wireless capability, functionality, interoperability, secure storage, immediate boot capacity, device categorization, bandwidth, cryptographic control, and power management. The design considerations should be a mix of the estimated average of all these components and indexed to balance the user requirements. You also need to set up a dispute resolution mechanism in case of failure in the long run. IoT device architecture, network, and cloud. There are four stages of integrating the different IoT processes. Stage one, network things, wireless sensors and actuators. Stage 2, sensor data aggregation systems and analog to digital data conversion. Stage 3, the appearance of edge IT systems. Stage 4, analysis, management, and storage of data. As these stages are evolving, the devices, the network, and the cloud application must be leveled equally in ecosystem for better stability and security. The IoT architecture is a combination of things, devices, platform, and sensors with data. Stage 1 of an IoT architecture consists of networked things, typically wireless sensors and actuators. Stage 2 has internet gateways and data acquisition systems that includes sensor data aggregation systems and analog to digital conversion. In Stage 3, edge IT systems perform pre-processing of the data before it moves to the data center or cloud. Finally, in Stage 4, data center and cloud is where the data is analyzed, managed, and stored on traditional back-end data center systems. Fundamentally, we need to have a functional, scalable, available, and maintainable architecture. If these are not supported, then architecture is not useful. Now, let's look at the three architecture areas of IoT. One, the client side, IoT device layer. Two, operators on the server side, IoT gateway layer. And three, a pathway for connecting clients and operators, IoT platform layer. These three layers interface with each other on the data synchronization front and pathway to generate more data from various applications. The feasibility of the layers depends on their application. Let us now differentiate between centralized and decentralized IoT architectures. The centralized architecture is a hub and is managed from one point, whereas the decentralized one is based on the use case. They do not help in the industrial IoT solution. The centralized architecture is associated with cloud architectures in which a central hub provides a series of backend services to smart devices. In decentralized architecture, there are many scenarios that require autonomous communication between smart devices in an IoT topology without the need of a central hub. The centralized systems help in event processing, and whereas decentralized systems operate more of peer-to-peer -peer messaging, the decentralized auditing is one of the essential features in a decentralized architecture. Use case, IoT smart farming. Use case, smart farming, IoT design. This use case addresses the design formalities using IoT. IoT design is an essential part of the navigational ecosystem. Smart farming requires precise architecture and components that help bring benefits to the farmers. The various factors that determine the IoT design are data, cost, efficiency, and product quality. The efficiency and durability of the ecosystem help the farmers plan their harvest and sow based on the climatic conditions using the sensors and geospatial location data. So, to be precise, any farmer needs to understand the fundamental design that can help run the ecosystem. Smart farming is useful as it helps the farmer to predict conditions and sow crops with less cost and utilize automation capabilities. To have such systems, you need to purchase the right hardware, which can monitor the accuracy of data and quality of the sensor. Once you have these systems, you can benefit more from farming. There are four things you need to integrate for smart farming. First is a data engine. Smart farming should have a robust data processing engine that can act as the brain and handle data processing, storage, and lead to efficient output. The second is hardware. You need to ensure that the hardware is durable and easy to maintain. Hardware with self-fixing algorithms is even better. The third aspect is mobile access. 
This is possible using a smartphone, along with offline or online mobile applications. To enable all three processes, you need cloud infrastructure with the Edge layer. This IoT system can enable smart farming for any crops in any geographical location. Let us look at another use case on using SIM cards to monitor sugar level in a diabetic patient. Diabetes management is a recurring concept where the patient has to check the blood sugar at regular intervals. In the traditional way, he has to go to the physician lab or he has to have his home blood glucose monitoring system. IoT can help create a system where the blood glucose data will be transmitted remotely via smartphone and a SIM embedded in it. Identifying the necessary and right hardware is one of the crucial steps of creating such a system. You need to choose the sensors for your device, or create a custom one which fits the glucometer. This can be a SIM card. The next step is to ensure that the quality of your sensors is good and has seamless integration with the system. Finally, make sure that the data monitoring happens in real time with high accuracy. Now, when the hardware landscape of this ecosystem is ready, you need to set the software then. First, it is crucial that you have software with self repair algorithm for service management. To enable this process, you need cloud infrastructure with Edge, and finally, a smartphone to work with the devices and sensors. Key takeaways. Now that you have completed this lesson, you should be able to explain the IoT reference architectures and frameworks, describe the IoT interoperability and its design considerations, and finally, discuss industry-aligned use cases. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.